Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. Let S be the source and XY be the source. There is a lens L1 and here there is a lens L2. In between them, there is a slit AB. The size of the slit AB is equal to small a. Now, AB equal to a. Well, S is the source which is a narrow slit illuminated by a monochromatic light. Now, source in the light, this lens is the slit. Slit is the slit. The slit is the slit. The source is at infinity. That is, for the slit AB, source S is at infinity. Light passing through the slit AB is focused on the screen by lens L2. Slit loader cardano boguna diffracted lights screening focus by using a lens L2. Now we get a diffraction pattern with the central maximum at P followed by secondary maxima and minima both sides. This screen will get the diffraction pattern as some it will be like this. The central maxima will be at P followed by secondary minima and maxima on both sides. Now, the geometrical distance from all the points of the slit AB to P is not the same. But the optical distance, optical path from all the points of the slit AB to P is same. Because light needs to travel through this lens also, it has a refraction distance. Surrounding medium refractors is different. So, P is optically equidistant from all the points on the slit AB. Therefore, the phase difference is zero. Now, the secondary waves reach the point P in the same phase and the point will have maximum intensity. P is there is no phase change. That means all have same phase. So, there will be maximum intensity as a part of constructive interference. Now, consider the point P1. This is the point P1. P1 and the other point you consider here. Or P1 might theta and the other angle make in the ray on P1 will focus with it. So, we're traveling in a direction making an angle theta with OP is focused at the point P1. That means, Field focus a pata line of mind this makes an angle theta everywhere. You can see there's an angle theta here. The angle is theta here. This angle is theta. Now consider this triangle consider triangle ABN sine theta equal to BN by AB opposite side divided by hypotenuse. We know that AB equal to small a, therefore sine theta equal to BN by A or BN equal to a sin theta where a is the width of the slit what is bn this is bn bn is the path difference between secondary waves originating from a and b so this is secondary waves originating from a and secondary waves originating from b so the path difference between these is ab now let us consider a different case. Now this all wave front AB can be divided into two parts. That is OA and AB. This is OA and this is OB. The all wave front can be divided as two OA and OB. Now, if this path difference BN equal to lambda, that is, if the path difference between the secondary waves from A and B is lambda, then the path difference between secondary waves from A and O is lambda by 2. This is half on the loop. Now, this path difference is equal to lambda by 2. As the path difference is lambda by 2, it will cause destructive interference. Now, we consider the upper half AO. Similar the case for lower half also. Thus, the destructive interference takes place at the point P1. 
That means if the path difference be n equal to lambda, the wavelength of light used, then P1 will be a point of minimum intensity. That is, if the path difference is equal to lambda, then P1 will be a point of minimum intensity. Therefore, for minimum intensity, Bn equal to lambda, that is, a sin theta equal to lambda, in general, a sin theta n equal to n lambda, or sin theta n equal to n lambda by a. When theta is small, sin theta equal to theta, therefore, the equation becomes theta n equal to n lambda by a, where theta n gives the direction of nth minima. In a similar approach, we can find the secondary maxima too. That is, if the path difference is an odd multiple of lambda by 2, then the direction of secondary maxima can be obtained as a sin theta n equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Or sin theta n equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2a, theta n equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2a, where n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. Now, let P1 P equal to Y and this angle is theta and this is D means the separation between slit and screen. That is, if D is the distance between slit and the screen, Y is the distance of first secondary minimum from the point P. Then, we have the equation angle equal to arc by radius or theta equal to Y by D. We have the equation of theta, theta equal to lambda by a. Comparing both, you will get y by d equal to lambda by a or y equal to lambda d by a. Now we got this y for this distance alone. If you want to get the full width, we need to multiply y with 2. The distance between first secondary minimum on either side of the central maximum is equal to 2y or the width of central maximum is given by 2y that is equal to 2 times this equation 2y d by a now when the lens l2 is very near to the slit that is when d is approximately equal to f the focal length then width of central maxima w equal to 2f lambda by a is a real image of a Fraunhofer diffraction Actually, we are using a rectangular aperture. If we are using a circular aperture, diagram will be different. We will get a graph like this, which is known as intensity distribution curve. So, intensity distribution curve can be depicted like this. Now, what will happen if we are using a circular aperture? That is diffraction by circular aperture. So, this is a source, here there is a lens, this is our slit, here it is a circular aperture, this is the lens 2. In the screen, this type of pattern is formed, circular pattern, it has a name, airy pattern. That is, the diffraction pattern due to circular aperture consists of a central bright disc called airy disc. Central disc is airy disc, it is surrounded by alternate dark and bright concentric ring called Aries rings. Now, the radius of first dark ring is given by R equal 1.22 F lambda by D. D is the diameter of this aperture. We have to use a rectangular slit in the case. We have to use a slit in the case. diameter of the aperture on the SD. It is slightly greater than half the width of central fringe for a slit. We have the equation width of central fringe for a slit. That is W equal to 2F lambda by A. In this case, A is replaced by D, diameter of the aperture. Then, half the width means F lambda by A or F lambda by D. F lambda by D given 1.2 F lambda by D means it is slightly higher. It is also called radius of central maximum. 
it decreases with increase of diameter of aperture as d increases r decreases now fraunhofer diffraction the and image kodutirund the right side image shows fraunhofer diffraction while we are using a rectangular aperture if you are using a circular aperture you will get this type of rings now resolving power what is resolution you may be heard about resolution in case of telescope camera etc actually what is resolution the method of separating two nearby object is called resolution the method of separating two nearby object is called resolution ഒരു മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പിന്റെ റെസൊല്യൂഷൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അത് എത്രത്തോളം മാഗ്നിഫൈ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് എന്നുള്ളതല്ല എത്രത്തോളം ചെറിയ രണ്ട് വസ്തുക്കളെ വ്യക്തമായിട്ട് സെപ്പറേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ സാധിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് എന്നതാണ് ദ മെത്തേഡ് ഓഫ് സെപ്പറേറ്റിംഗ് ടു നിയർ ബൈ ഒബ്ജെക്ട് ഇസ് കാൾ റെസൊല്യൂഷൻ നൗ ദ എബിലിറ്റി ഓഫ് ആൻ ഒപ്റ്റിക്കൽ ഇൻസ്ട്രുമെന്റ് ടു പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ഡിസ്റ്റിങ്ക്ലി സെപ്പറേറ്റ് ഇമേജസ് ഓഫ് ടു ഒബ്ജെക്ട് വെരി ക്ലോസ് ടുഗദർ ഇസ് കാൾ റിസോൾവിംഗ് പവർ now resolving power of telescope the resolving limit of a telescope is represented by d theta and is given by d theta equal to 1.22 lambda by t where lambda is the wavelength d is the diameter of aperture of telescope objective now the resolving power rp is the reciprocal of resolving limit that is rp equal to 1 by d theta or rp equal to d by 1.22 lambda but from the equation angle equal to arc by radius then d theta equal to r by f where f is the focal length of the telescope objective comparing this two equation we can write r by f equal to 1.22 lambda by d or r equal to 1.22 lambda f by d where r is the radius of the central bright image 